Nonprofit board members. Every nonprofit needs them, but what makes one candidate better than the next? Stick around after the intro and we'll explore what makes a good board member and where to find them. Hi, I'm Greg McRae, founder and CEO of Foundation Group, and welcome back to our 501c3 University channel, where we endeavor to make nonprofit compliance understandable. Here's an indisputable fact. No decision you make regarding your nonprofit carries more weight than who has chosen to lead it. The members of your board of directors are your governing body, and they have both legal and fiduciary accountability for its actions. Sounds pretty serious, right? Well, it is serious, but this conversation doesn't need to hinge on those issues necessarily, as important as they are. The reality is your board is the group that should be helping to guide the ship, providing insight, oversight, and strategic strategic input, making them not just a legal necessity, but more like an indispensable asset to your organization. So with that in mind, who makes a great nonprofit board member? Let's start by looking at a new nonprofit's initial board of directors. We deal with this at Foundation Group hundreds of times a year as we work with startup nonprofits, so we know a thing or two about this scenario. Here's how it usually goes. The nonprofit is being started by one or two primary drivers. They are the social entrepreneurs who are the idea people and most likely they're going to be the key workers early on in getting this thing off the ground. As I've alluded to in previous videos, there's just not a lot of difference between these folks and anyone else starting a new small business. If they don't do it, it just doesn't get done. But a key differentiator between a new small business and a new nonprofit is that the new small business is not required to have a board of directors. The new nonprofit is required to have that, even if it's only a handful of people. And assuming the nonprofit is a public charity, like most are, ideally the majority of these individuals will not be directly related to the founders by blood, marriage, or outside business connection, and will not be compensated by the nonprofit. So who do you choose? I think one of the most important qualifications is shared sense of purpose. Do these candidates believe in the mission? And if so, do they believe in it enough to contribute time, talent, and treasure to the endeavor? More on that in a minute. The next question to consider is do they possess at least a cursory level of business or organizational competency? They don't have to be business leaders per se, but they should understand good business practices. And ideally, they'll have some long game strategic thinking capability. The third consideration is do they understand their role as government not managerial. Don't gloss over this one because it's huge. Board service should be conducted from above the forest, not down in the trees. There are times when a nonprofit may be in crisis and a much more heavy-handed involvement by the board becomes necessary, but that's the exception, not the rule. Boards set the direction and let management handle the day-to-day. -day. Of course, the smaller a nonprofit is, the blurrier that line can become. Last but certainly not least, a board member must be a person of integrity. If you don't understand that without explanation, I'm not sure there's any Thing I can say to help you get it. You'll find out soon enough. Get people who are worthy of trust. So what about professionals? Well, we get this question all the time from nonprofit founders, so it's worth mentioning here. Shouldn't we find an accountant, a lawyer, a fill-in-the-blank to be on the board? We're going to need legal and accounting help, so don't we need board members like that? The short answer is, well, no, you don't. I'm not telling you to pass over accountants and lawyers for board service, but do not pick them thinking you're going to get pro bono services out of them. At a minimum, it's pretty Pretty presumptuous on your part to assume that, plus it just never really works out well in the end. Professionals prioritize paying customers. Even if they're well-intentioned about helping your nonprofit, your work will be relegated to the bottom of their to-do list. Don't believe me? Ask any of the clients we've had that learned that lesson the hard way. If you want a credentialed professional on your board, make sure you're recruiting them for reasons other than their profession. And please do not ask for freebies. So, does any of this change as the board matures, people roll off and vacancies need filling? No, not really. The qualifications pretty much stay the same. The longer you operate a nonprofit and interact with your board, the more you're going to come to recognize those characteristics that bring the most value to your table. Which leads me back to an issue I teased earlier, and that's the willingness of board members to give the three T's, time, talent, and treasure. I think the first one of those, time, is somewhat assumed. It can be somewhat relative too. Some boards only meet annually, though I think that's not nearly often enough. Most boards will meet somewhere between 
monthly and quarterly. The second T, talent, simply means they bring their knowledge, their experience, and their love of your mission to the decision table and help strategically guide your organization selflessly and with due diligence. If they have specific abilities related to your mission, all the better. The final T, treasure, is a little more controversial, but I am a big believer in it. Show me a board member who does not contribute financially to the nonprofit they're serving on the board of, and I'll show you a board member who is occupying a chair someone else ought to be sitting in. Full stop. A board member is far more likely to be engaged and act in the best interest of the nonprofit if they have skin in the game. It's a best practice to have this expectation up front in your discussions with potential board members, and you may even want to include a requirement to contribute in your bylaws. It's that important. So where do you find these people? Admittedly, good help can be hard to find. The larger your organization gets, the easier it usually gets because your organization is starting to attract like-minded people. But what about in the early days? This is when it's probably the hardest but also the most critical to get it right. Hopefully, if you're a social entrepreneur starting a new nonprofit, you already know people who share your vision. If not, you're gonna have to get a little more creative. Ask other nonprofits in your area. You may have a nonprofit incubator in your city that could help. Maybe your local chamber of commerce could give you some ideas. There's no single right answer to this, but please don't phone it in. Starting off with placeholders, or worse, activist board members who have a different vision is a recipe for disaster. Asking someone to serve on a nonprofit board is a big ask. It's also a privilege and a responsibility for the person who agrees to do it. Take the time to choose wisely and your nonprofit will reap the rewards. Thanks for watching, now go serve your community. Hey, do me a favor and don't navigate away just yet. We would really appreciate it if you would click the like button as it really helps get our content recommended to more people. Subscribe if you haven't already as we have great content coming your way on a regular basis. Finally, you can click the little bell icon to be notified of new content when we post it. To learn more about Foundation Group, you can always visit us on the web at www.501c3.org. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.